Hello everyone, and welcome back to the lab. Today we're going to be taking a look at this Apple 2GS, which is um, the last edition of the Apple II line of computers. So I do have a lot of experience with the Apple II line. I have here an Apple IIc that works great. It's got a lot of features. It's very nice. But the Apple IIgs is very different. For one, it supports much better graphics and sound, hence the GS in the name. And it also supports a sort of pseudo 16-bit architecture with the 65C816 processor, rather than the classic 6502 processor that's used in the Apple II line. Um, the 65C816 is backwards compatible, which is why it can run Apple II software, and will run a game that I made for the Apple II one here, just to test it out. But uh, I want to see what else this machine can do, so I'm going to try and run some classic Apple IIgs software specifically, like the GSOS operating system and many games um, on this machine and just see how it works. So let's get started. Okay, so let's turn on the machine. I have it all plugged in and I'm using a step-down transformer because this is an American uh, model. So where's the switch? Here it is. And I turn on the screen. It should, it has booted up successfully. It's just saying it doesn't have anything to boot. Uh, that's totally normal. Um, so let's just test it out. I don't have any disks of this or a disk drive. Um, I do have many Apple II disks, but I don't have a disk drive to put them in. So what I do have instead is this floppy emu, which is a really versatile tool. You can also use it for Macs and classic Apple IIs. Um, and this just emulates various Apple disk drives, including hard drives as well. So I'm going to use this to load up my game. Okay, so it's loading up my game. So this is in compatibility mode in just for the regular Apple II. But my game should still be playable on this machine using all of the backwards compatible hardware. So after it loads, we'll give it a try. I've actually written this game for several architectures, not just the Apple II, but also the Commodore 64, um, the uh, Atari 8-bit line, and uh, several others and I'm going to port it to more uh, machines as I go along. It's written in assembly language, and you can find the source code uh, in the link in the description. So, um, here is the game, and you can toggle between the color palette and the monochrome palette, which is designed for use in monochrome monitors, but of course I'm using a color monitor, so we'll switch it to the color palette. And I can choose a board size here and adjust my difficulty um, using the arrow keys, at least I believe I can. Yep, as you can see on the right hand side there, maybe you can see the number of mines is going up and down. But anyway, let's get started. <laughs> because the original Apple II doesn't have a timer chip, the frequency of the cursor blinking is really fast here because the CPU is so much faster. But as you can see, this is essentially Minesweeper, except controlled with the keyboard. So that one should be safe. Okay, well the game seems to be working. It's not the most advanced Apple II game, but it's something to just test it out, and it's something I made myself, so I think that's pretty fun. And let's just lose. Oops, I wanted to lose, but I actually successfully placed a piece. Okay, uh, okay, I know. This one is, there we go, and now we've lost. But it seems to be working okay, so the machine does seem to be okay. Let's try it with some Apple IIgs software. All right, this is one of my favorite games for the Apple IIgs, and in general, actually, I really love this game. I've played it for hours as a child, um, so hopefully it'll load up soon. That was an interesting sound. 
All right, let's see what happens. This is Sid Meier's Pirates, if you couldn't understand the very garbled audio that just came out of this machine. Oh, it crashed. Okay, well, this version doesn't seem to work very well. Let's try another one. Bit of Baroque music there for us. I wonder if there's a way to change the volume on this. The music in Pirates isn't too obnoxious, but it might be obnoxious in some other games. Anyway, we'll see. Here's... Welcome to Pirates. I will start a new career. I won't select any particular historical period. And I'll be English. It's the closest. My name is... My family name is... Professor. And I will just play an apprentice, whatever, skillet fencing. Okay, so I'm going to seek my fortune in the new world. Alright, I think we can skip that. Oh, here's the copy protection. Do you know when the silver train arrives at Portobello in 1660? Um, well, I don't have the manual on me, so I guess I'll just say it was January early in the month. And they're probably gonna... They sneer at my ignorance. Oh dear. So I'm probably going to lose this fight now. But we'll see what happens. had no chance because I failed the copy protection check. It's much harder to play this game if you don't have the manual for that reason. Anyway, it does seem to be working nicely, so let's give some other games a try. Takes a long time for these things to load. This is Zany Golf from Electronic Arts. This was before they turned evil. Well, maybe they've always been evil, I don't know. But uh, here, it, here it comes. Press 1 to 4, four to start. Let's just start on course 1, I guess. Windmill hole. I wish I could turn off this music or make it quieter. Oops. Now I'm in a worse position than when I started. There we go. Okay, the sounds are so obnoxious, I'm going to have to stop this right now. Arkanoid 2. So Arkanoid was uh, famously invented by Steve Wozniak. Here we go. Oh, this is supposed to be a family-friendly channel. Let's just ignore that. Oh! GSOS. So this is actually running on GSOS as a basis, which would mean that it needs ROM version 0.1. So this is actually a ROM 0 machine, um, not a 0.1 or 0.2 machine. I think I can upgrade it. I do have a chip here. This is apparently a uh, ROM version 1 chip. So I think I can upgrade the ROM chip in here so that I can run GSOS. Because um, right now I can't even run the, the desktop GSOS either, I don't think, because 
Um, I believe GSOS, all versions of GSOS require at least ROM version 1. So let's try and upgrade this, and then we'll see if we can run Arkanoid, um, Arkanoid 2 rather, and GSOS Desktop, and we'll see how that goes. There we go. That's the cover off. Despite my weakened arm from the COVID vaccine, I can still uh, pull it off easily enough. Just put that down here. Okay, looking inside, it looks very nice. We've got this extra board here, which is, I believe, a RAM expansion. But it doesn't actually have any RAM. Oh, it only has a handful of RAM chips in it. So we could actually probably upgrade this by adding more RAM chips. And uh, then we'd get a even more RAM on this machine, which would be cool. So that's something to look if, look to in the future. Now, I'm looking for the ROM chip here. I know you can't see, but there is a chip here that is labeled Microsoft. And that tells me that it has BASIC on it. And if it has BASIC on it, then that means it's the ROM chip. Also, it's the same size as my upgrade chip. So that looks promising. So I've got my trusty chip remover here and I'm just going to adjust it to the width necessary and then just get it under there. And out it comes. This is the ROM chip, I think. Yeah, exactly the same number of pins yeah, I think this is the ROM chip. So, I've removed the ROM chip. Oh, it even says ROM right there. Okay, good. So I'm very happy with that now. Now, looking at this, I'm trying to figure out which way it goes. It's unfortunately not clear. Yeah, I think it was this way. Okay. Well, that's that installed. So now, let's just plug the power back in. Okay, it booted, and it said ROM version 01. So now, Let's see if Arkanoid 2 will start. Yes, here we go. It's booting 2GS, so uh, GSOS. So it does seem to be actually working. One unfortunate thing about Floppy Emu is that it seems to also emulate the speed of floppy disks, which isn't the best thing. Um, there we go, finally it loaded. All right, Arkanoid 2. Is there anything I need to press? All right. Is it mouse? It's mouse. Okay. Now I'm ready. Uh, it's hard to play with your hands moved over to the other side, but I don't have space for the mouse on this side of the table. <laughs> there we go. All right. Oh well. Game over, but it's working now, which is the main thing. So let's try the GSOS desktop now. Um, Okay, it's booting into GSOS, 
So if you don't know, GSOS is essentially a graphical user interface for the GS, which is similar to the Mac gra graphical user interface, and some people say it's superior. Um, the resolution is a lot lower than the Mac, though, so I don't agree with that assessment. Um, but it is quite a nice little tool. And apparently at Apple, when they were developing this, there was some competition between the internal teams that developed the GSOS platform and the people who were developing Macintosh. And so uh, the GSOS people would add a feature to their interface and then the Macintosh people would copy it and vice versa. So it isn't right to say that this is just a clone of the Mac interface. They were sort of co-developed at the same time. But Apple didn't invest any more into the GS platform after this machine. So this never got as much traction as the Macintosh. Here we go. Okay, so we've got our rainbow Apple menu here. The Apple 2 GS Finder. That's right, this is not the only, um, the Mac isn't the only machine that has a finder. But as you can see, the interface is quite similar in many respects to um, the Mac. So there's a few applications here, basically just the usual ones, ProDOS and Basic and stuff like that. But the interface is indeed very nice. And you can choose all from a wide range of colors here and stuff like that, which is not something that the Mac could do. So let's just uh, try launching Basic here. You cannot run this program directly. So when it switches into Apple II mode, it really just takes over the whole system and switches the whole thing into Apple II mode. It's not like uh, Windows 95 where it has an embedded DOS mode. It's more like Windows 3.1. Yeah, it has to reboot basically back into GSOS after starting an Apple II application. Let's try, if I can't start basic, directly, then what's the point of this? Okay, I can start basic, here we go. So I can now write a program in basic like this. Print hello 20.2.10. Yay, there we go. I don't know how to break on this machine. There we go. Okay. So a way to exit this. Typically we don't exit BASIC on an Apple II, so I don't know how I would return to GSOS. Do I just... Um, yeah, I have no idea how to exit this. Um, well, I guess there's one way to do this. All right, well, that's going to do it for our look at the Apple II GS for today. Um, it's a real shame that this machine doesn't have a wider library of games. I mean, I only scratched the surface today looking at a couple of them, but there are, like, the architecturally, this is quite similar, in fact, to a Super Nintendo. Um, it, at least they share the same processor, so it's surprising that there aren't more ports from the Super Nintendo for this machine. But I guess it just never really took off and was always running second fiddle to the Macintosh, so there just never was a real critical mass behind it. Um, most of the time, I imagine, these machines were used to just run classic Apple II software and not to run 2GS software, which is a bit of a shame because this machine is so much more powerful than a regular Apple II. But um, maybe in the future, I can contribute my own games to this machine's library of available titles. I could port the game that I already wrote for the Apple II uh, to this with b minimal difficulty, and then I could try and use the uh, uh, enhanced graphics and sound capabilities of that machine to produce a really nice-looking polished game of Minesweeper for this platform. Maybe I could even make it run in uh, GSOS, although I have no idea how to do that, so I'll still have to uh, look into that. But anyway, that's going to do it for today, so I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, click the like button, if you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll be happy to read them. And of course, if you want to see more from me, subscribe to the channel. That'll be it. See you next time.